Hello, Golden Rams, and welcome to a new episode of Ram Center. And as always, it's your boy, Josh Swift. And I'm Ashley Williams. Josh, how was your weekend? My weekend was actually relaxing. Our Eagles got the win against the Cowboys. I know, finally. I'm so happy. It's a good game. Since the first time I went to the Cowboys-Eagles game, they lost. Yeah, but that was bad. I'm glad they made up for it. How was your weekend, though? My weekend was magnificent because our football team is PSAC East champs. Yes. So they defeated East Strasburg this past weekend with a score of 41-27. to 27. This was a game to remember, Josh. And matter of fact, I think this is the best game they played all season. I mean, I would have to totally agree, Ashley. The Rams were relentless offensively and defensively. And speaking of offense, the Rams scored 24 points in the second half. Quarterback Pat Moriarty went 19 for 30 and racked up 170, 187 yards and three touchdowns. Also, my boy, running back, Brandon Monk, <laughs> he racked up. Crazy amount of yards, 170 yards with two touchdowns. Wow. That, that was a, that's the way to get the victory, you know, exactly. especially for the championship game. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Agreed. But the Rams' journey to success doesn't end there. The Rams look to become the PSAC champs this Saturday against PSAC West champs Slippery Rock at 12:10 at the Farrell Stadium. The game is going to be crazy. I can't wait. But it was also a big day for our men's cross country team this past weekend at West Branch Course. They placed 11th in the NCAA. Atlantic Regional Meet, senior Jake Seigel placed 34th out of 134 runners to lead the Rams with a time of 32 minutes and 32 seconds. That was the second fastest time on that course in Westchester history. Wow. All the Golden Rams finished top 100, and on the women's side, senior Amanda Eisman finished fourth in the same meet to lead the Rams. Good job, Rams. Way to make us proud. Those are amazing achievements, they Josh. Are. And speaking of amazing, four of our women's soccer team players were named to all PSAC teams. Wow. Senior co-captain Eric Chirac and Kara Parvel were both selected PSAC first team, while Scarlett Walsh and, Walsh and Caitlin McNamara were selected PSAC second and third team. Good job, ladies. This week has been huge for Westchester, Ashley, and it doesn't stop from here. The men's diving team had individual performances from Tim Singia and Daniel Roy with NCAA qualifying marks. That's so great, guys. Keep up the good work. Now let's check out what we have in store for us in this day in sports segment. Welcome to our This Day in Sports segment. On This Day in Sports, in 2013, the Philadelphia 76ers defeated Orlando Magic in double overtime with a score of 126 to 125. 76ers point guard Michael Carter-Williams put up 27 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 assists, while Magic guard Victor Oladipo put up 25 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists. They became the first pair of rookies to put up triple doubles. On behalf of Ram Center, we would like to congratulate both gentlemen on this accomplishment. Now let's throw it over to Marcellus with this segment on Behind the Ram. What's going on, Rams? It's your boy Marcellus here bringing you all Behind the Ram. In this week's segment, we have Mike Murphy. But tell a little about yourself, man. Well, I'm the host of Brother Love Sports Talk on WCUR Westchester, and I'm the sports director of WCUR Westchester as well. Thank you for having on this week, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, so Mike and I will be discussing about the Philadelphia Eagles on how the season's going, living up to expectations under Chip Kelly, and giving our thoughts on the rest of the season. Now, let's get right on into it as we will be discussing about the Burgang season thus far. Now, as we reached the halfway point of the Seagull, the Eagles last night won in overtime against Dallas with a score of 33-27, to and the record currently is 4-4. Four and four. As the season is going along, I think the Eagles have been pretty much mediocre at best because I expected them to come out with a little more, you know, pizzazz, a little style, something like that. Because during the offseason, they acquired running backs DeMarco Murray and Ryan Matthews. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that the Eagles would have, you know, a little bit more powerful run game this season compared to last year. But I can't blame in all the running backs because injuries do happen and our offensive line has shifted around a lot. So pretty much this season, I feel as though Ryan Matthews has had the better production than DeMarco Murray. So Mike, what do you think about the Legion of Zoom? Well, Marcellus, from what I can see, it looks like Coach Kelly has underutilized DeMarco Murray. Murray is better out of an eye formation where he's able to get more of a running start. He's, been, he's also a very good downhill runner, which we haven't seen him do a lot lately. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't run good east to west. Uh, I think that the limited number of touches, 5 to 10 per game for DeMarco Murray, hasn't been sufficient enough for a running back of his caliber. Understandable. That's an interesting point of view, Mike. That's definitely something we should keep in mind and ensure for the rest of the season. Also, we can't go without discussing the QB situation in Sam Bradford. This season, in my opinion, I feel as though he's a mediocre at best. Mm -hmm. Hasn't really shown anything to stand up for the rest of the quarterbacks in the league. 
personally, I think Mark Sanchez will be possibly given a chance if Sam Bradford doesn't live up to our expectations. Or, wild card, possibly go out to 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick. I mean, he's a mobile quarterback, and it would be perfect for Chip Kelly's system. He could run the read option with Darren Sproles, DeMarco Murray, and Ryan Matthews, and have his mechanics worked on for sure. But right now, it feels like the Eagles need to get themselves together and progress on through the season. So, Mike, what do you think the Eagles should do about the QB situation from here in the season to next year? Well, Marcellus, I love the idea of a mobile quarterback and Chip Kelly system. I was very uneasy from the day I heard Bradford was our guy QB, yeah. and that uneasiness has not left me since then. I was all about giving Bradford a chance, but this small sample size that I think that we've seen that we've seen from him, I think a younger, more mobile quarterback in Kaepernick is what we need in this system right now. So, I think that we should get Kaepernick in the system. Lest we forget, Kaepernick took uh, the San Francisco 49ers to two NFC championships and one Super Bowl. People forget that so quickly, and it's amazing. I can't believe that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, Mike. We definitely have to keep that in store for next season. Well, that's all the time we have on this week's segment of Behind the Ram. I'm Marcellus Council Jones, and thank you for coming on the show, Mike. Great to have you, man. Thanks for having me. Not a problem at all. Make sure you all stay tuned every week for your Westchester sports needs. And stay golden, Rams, now on Amy for her top plays of the week. Hey guys, it's Amy with your top plays of the week. This past weekend, Westchester, who are 6-2, took on East Stroudsburg, who are 5-4, here at Farrell Stadium for the PSAC East Championship game. We have a great kick return from Brandon Monk for 50-yard gain. We also have a nice pass from quarterback Pat Moriarty to Jim Hurley for a Westchester first down. The final score was Westchester 41, East Stroudsburg 24. Our Golden Rams are Eastern champions once again. Westchester will face the 10th ranked Slippery Rock University next weekend on Saturday, November 14th here at Farrell Stadium for the PSAC Championship game. Kickoff is at 12.10 p.m. and the game can be caught live on Sports Fever Television and also on ESPN3 and ESPN College Plan. That's all I have for top plays this week. Now over to Samara for Pro Sports. The 2015 NBA Championship winning Golden State Warriors are off to a hot start, winning their first seven games of the season. Notable opponents they defeated include the Clippers, Pelicans, Rockets, and Grizzlies. Point guard Steph Curry is currently leading the league in scoring, averaging 33.9 points per game. Guard Klay Thompson believes his team will be able to make a run toward the 1995-96 Bulls cherished record of 72 season wins. Another top contender are the Cavs, who are off to a 6-1 start, only losing their first game of the season to the Bulls. Kevin Love has been a key component to the team's success, averaging 17 points per game and an astounding 12.6 rebounds per game. Even without star point guard Kyrie Irving, LeBron and the Cavs are dominating their opponents. A rematch of last year's championship series featuring the Warriors and Cavs is definitely in the works. Despite the 76ers getting off to a slow start, losing their first six games, their future looks bright with young players like Jaleel Okafor and Nerlens Noel. Averaging 19.7 points per game, Okafor has been a positive addition to the team. However, at 6'11", he needs to be averaging more than 5.5 rebounds per game. Newly acquired guard Nick Stauskas has also helped the team, averaging 14.6 points per game, 10 more than he averaged last season with the Kings. Hopefully, these young players will be able to get some wins under their belt, but for right now, they are sitting at fourth place in their division. That's all I have for this week. I'm Samara Rosenfeld, Ashley and Josh, back to you. Thanks, Samara. And this NBA season is so crazy right now. The Warriors, the defending champs, look like the Great. same Warriors as they were last They're season. They're trying to do the same exact They thing. might. They might go back. Uh, what do you think of the Sixers? I know their record isn't too great, but Jaleel Okafor, he's looking yeah, pretty he's good. Yeah, he's looking really good. And I'm kind of glad that we got him. And with the side of Nerlens Noel, who and in the front court, they can do some damage in the paint. But we'll see what happens, though. We'll see what happens. Maybe. <laughs> but that's all we have for this week's episode. Thank you for watching. My name is Ashley Williams. And I'm Josh Swift. And please don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at WCU Ram Center. Have a great week.